Happy hump day, everybody. Yes. You made it to Wednesday. Wednesday. Well, that's good news. Halfway, halfway down. Through. That's right. And also happens to be uh, International Women's Day as well. Yay. That's right. So happy International Women's that's Day. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Sarah, happy <laughs> International Women's Day. And um, Chris and I can still celebrate. Yeah, we're celebrating. Yes, so celebrate all the women that's in your right. life. That's right. Um, Kia, you've been talking this morning about, particularly when it comes to women, the wage gap. Yes. And, and this when, is disappointing. I had no I, idea yes. it's still going on. I'm, oh, yeah. I'm so the, sorry. So the stat that we were talking about this morning, it stayed the same for about the last 20 years. I mean, there's been like a, I think a, a reduction of maybe 2%. So we're, we're not as far along as we'd like to think. So no. like Ben said, International Women's Day, but March is actually Women's History Month. So that's why for the next few weeks, we're talking money tips, we're talking history, specifically for the ladies. So we're starting with that Pew Research poll talking about the wage gap. And it showed the wage difference between men and women staying the same since 2002. So last year, the average a woman on average earned about 82% of what men earned. And then in 2002, it was about 80% as much as men earned. So a Charlotte-based money coach, I caught up with her earlier in the week, and she's breaking down some of the possible reasons behind the stat, as well as clarifying some misconceptions. Women are just not negotiating pay the same way that men are. Do you think that there are disparities that exist in other areas that kind of have this indirect impact on financial disparities, especially between men and women? Oh, there's so many. <laughs> um, uh, and not indirect, I would say actually pretty directly impacted. The the ones that come up to mind most specifically for me, so number one, healthcare. Um, I think that uh, there is a lot more education to be done in our system of what constitutes healthcare for women and women having to pay out of pocket for procedures that men don't have to do. All right, that was Bernadette Joy, and she's helping us with some money tips this morning. So here's three. First, pay down your credit card debt. Joy says variable interest rates are on the rise, so make sure you get rid of the debt now to avoid paying higher interest later. Second, don't settle for just financial literacy. Yes, get educated, but you got to learn what works for you and make sure you do it. And third, negotiate your pay. Joy says, so she had spent time in human resources before becoming a money coach, and she said that she consistently saw men negotiate their pay right out of the gate, more than women did. So we've been asking all morning, what are your tips to negotiate pay? Keep texting us at 704-329-3600. I think we've got a few responses already in. Some was saying, you know, check glass door and then go with like the highest amount because you can expect to be lowballed. I mm -hmm. thought that was a really good response. Others though, don't always have this option. So teachers cannot negotiate salaries. We were just talking about it in the newsroom too. You know, some government jobs don't allow you to negotiate salaries either. So, I mean, first you got to figure out if this is an option for you, but it never hurts to ask. Let's start there. Yeah, that's number one. Never hurts to ask, and you got to aim high. Don't right. sell yourself short because if you start low, they're going to go lower. Exactly. So that's all you have to do. Is it, it's The hardest thing in life is sometimes to fight for your own self-worth. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, that's that's one thing is pump yourself up before you go into that meeting. Yeah. I was telling you guys, I read Mika Brzezinski's book, yeah. Knowing Your Value, and she talks a lot about this in the book about how women, we don't fight for ourselves. Mm -hmm and how men will go in and they'll say, hey, I want to talk about this. And women, we approach a lot of the times, we'll say, we'll go into our boss's office and go, hey, sorry to bug you. Um, can I talk about, or you'll yeah. start an email with, hey, sorry, can mm -hmm. you? And after I read that book, I noticed I was doing that all the yeah. time and I was trying, okay, don't say that, just send the email or just go in there and say, hey, I would like to talk to you about such and such, but knowing your value right. is, is mm -hmm. so important. And what's the worst they can say? No, or, yeah. you know, you come to the middle and, exactly. and, and meet in the middle on. on you miss 100% yeah. of the shots you don't That's take. That's right. One of my favorite That's quotes, so Michael true. Scott. No, I kidding. think a lot of people worry about, <laughs> about being too pushy, maybe. Or, or, yes. And, mm. and, and I think that's not, hopefully the person hiring you wants an aggressive yeah. Assertive, but I think right. from, from a man, it's yeah, like totally. that's that's how men are. If that from a woman sometimes is perceived as pushy, yeah. aggressive, oh, and yeah. then people don't like that in in women. Yeah, uh, Oh, yeah, go ahead. I was just saying, Melissa, real quick, said she always negotiates promotions and pay raises every year. So good Ready for you, go, Melissa. You Melissa. Yeah. My wake up clap. In, um, human resources in corporate America in Atlanta when I was growing up. And when I started, you know, in my first TV jobs, I think a lot of people know we work on contracts. Mm -hmm. And he got so frustrated with me in, like, my first two jobs. He said... Who got frustrated with my you? My dad. Oh, okay. Oh, he I would the sit there and he story. would be like... A man in your position would never feel bad about asking for more money. You have to get mm -hmm. that out of your mind. Yes. 
they would never feel like that. I think we take it personal and it's business, right? Yeah, exactly. I, th I would agree with that totally. You said you had a similar experience? No, my dad was in HR too. And when I first got in TV news, clearly I'm not a woman, so it's not quite the same. <laughs> but but he was like, oh, you should make this demand and do that. And it was small market TV. And I was starting there. You were like, no. I was like, yeah, that's just not the way it works. <laughs> I'm not, not going to make more than this. Exactly. I'm not Lester Holt yet. So no, I can't go, I <laughs> yes, can't go in I make, making all these demands quite yet. Um, so it, I mean, I think it, it's yeah. similar. But Good advice different. for guys and girls. I mean, we all totally. should make you know, oh, yeah. what we're worth. And so. it's funny, like where what we hear from our parents, you know, my parents, I mean, my mom's a nurse my dad's an insurance agent this isn't something that like they really talked about and so mm -hmm. I remember because I had to live with my parents for a little bit um, in between jobs and I remember like the look of just bewilderment when my mom heard me like on the phone or over zoom saying okay well like this is what I want based off of these reasonings and I remember getting off the phone and my mom was like what's happening like what yeah <laughs> what, are, what are you doing and I was like well I'm negotiating my salary and she's like I, I didn't even understand that, like, you <laughs> that was allowed that. <laughs> yeah wow and I think people you know they talk more about salaries with friends with each yeah. other yeah. than yeah. they than they used to which I think yes. bosses don't always like oh, yes. but but people want to know like in this market or in this job like what are you making or what should I be what what is the area I should be aiming for with power. this well, position exactly. for sure Susie exactly. Warman talks about that and about how being transparent even though it goes against everything we've been raised to talk about yeah mm -hmm. that it actually empowers all of us mm -hmm. um, in, a, in a work environment because you know what you're dealing with yeah and it's not this big secret looming over everything all right and I think one of the things I remember talking with my friends you know they're trying to figure out okay well how do I come up with a number in the first place and so to me like there's just a couple of rules of thumb I think that like we need to pay a little more attention to your rent slash living expenses are only supposed yeah. to be what is it 30 or 33 uh, percent a third a third yeah. Yeah. And so to me, like, you know, I always say estimate your value and then add interest. So mm. for me, when I was negotiating my salary, my biggest thing was like, okay, what's the average cost of living? Let me find an apartment that I would really like to be at and then calculate the living expenses. And then so smart. Yeah. I'm yeah. trying. I mean, it's a lot of math and that's, that's not much wrong. Yeah. But, <laughs> but I, I wanted to lower it to a fourth. I was like, all right, well, I'm going to go in and I say, I want my salary to be, you know, four times whatever my living expenses yeah. are going to be. And that was a good a good place to start. Yeah. Especially here, like rent is just going up oh, yeah. well, depending totally. on where you live, and so Look. yeah, it's a tough economy. And I, I think a lot of employers don't really f factor in the inflation of life in general yeah. about oh. what it costs to live, what it costs yeah. grocery child stores, care. where <laughs> childcare, right. where you notice that the salaries are just staying stagnant, and meanwhile mm -hmm. everything's going yeah. up. So that's a very yeah. good idea to factor in life around what you're being paid mm -hmm. and saying that hey, I can't live on this salary and that's one of the best defenses that you could yeah. have. Oh, yeah. The first thing I looked up after, well, second thing, I guess, after looking up rent prices, I looked up insurance prices um, because okay. my dad being an insurance agent, that's, sure. you know, smart conversations are house. Yeah. But, you know, back in Wisconsin, um, I like to pay my policy a year out so I can get it over with and get the discount, of course. And I think it was like 983 and some change. And here, to pay my policy out a year in advance, thousands. Like, Two, oh. up to $2,000. Oh, what a difference. And I'm like, I wonder, like, how many people are thinking about this? Because I'm sure, you're, like, when you're thinking about moving states, I mean, especially across the country, the last yeah. thing on your mind is, I wonder how much I'll pay for a car. No, you yeah. get here, and I was like, that's how much it is yeah. for registration? Yeah. 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 Tax yeah. changes. You know, there's only a few states that don't have yes. a state income tax, mm -hmm. but it way, you know, go, it's different totally. from state to yeah. state. Oh, yeah, Things smart like asset calculator. That's what I use. And you can plug in, like, what your, is it net or gross that does not factor in your taxes. I don't know which one it is, but you put that one in. And then <laughs> I'm like, you know, I have somebody do my taxes for me. <laughs> but you put in your zip code and it's a free website. You put in your zip code, you put in your gross pay gross, yeah. and it'll tell you, okay, well, here's the local tax, the state tax, the federal income tax. And this is what you're going to be left with at the end of the month. And, and then they factor in like how often you're paid in the first place, whether you're weekly, bi-weekly, monthly, salaried, whatever it is. So, I mean, I, I just wonder how many people know about these tools. I hope everybody listening is like writing down notes because this is some good nuggets, yeah. especially for young folks. And just as another side note, since it is kind of around tax season, if say if you did get that raise that you fought for, don't forget to go back and reuse that calculator to factor in mm -hmm. what you should be paying because you could have a big surprise from Uncle Sam that you oh, actually yeah, owe money sure. from that. For so sure. kind of a reminder since we're on that general subject, I need to do that as well. So. <laughs> it's about that time. Oh my goodness. All right, folks. That'll All do right. it for us first now. Let us know any of uh, your tips for negotiations. Weigh in, and we'll see you back here tomorrow morning for another edition of Wake Up Charlotte to Go.
Ooh.